Right. A lot of artists, particularly commercial artists, whether they're in the illustration field or, or the gallery field, yeah. are very much stuck in a rut. They find something that works, they get a response to it, and they just repeat the whole thing again and again for the whole career. Now, the only guy who didn't do this was Picasso. And to a certain extent, you in the comics field have always progressed, changed your style, used a different palette, different mark-making techniques. You've never stayed stuck in one style. Right. You care to explain that? Um, well, basically all I do is just go with the particular sense, sense, of, sense of mind and... Uh, Sounds horrible. The the flow, the, the flow, the flow. Go with the flow. You know, I think a lot of the, a lot of those different stars came through have a necessi necessity for speed to get the, the piece produced. And I just found that it's much quicker to to really uh, just apply the paint down side quicker, a lot quicker, and uh, use colour pencils and spray paint and everything else to get the, the effect you, you want, want, but a lot quicker. But I think it's just a, I think it's just a, 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 about attacking the piece, attacking the piece. And, Get it done and get it out there. It really is. It's really instinctive. Really, the thing is that people. I think the reason why people have become so staid in their style are because maybe they um, just slow. But although they could, they could pick up the speed, I think it's a matter. I, I, I came through um, through uh, my stuff came through like a, you know commercial art where they want stuff tomorrow. So you've got to find a way to get something done. It's always about you know. Just get the paint down or the colour down as quick as possible to colour in the, the, the image you've done to, to a point where you, you think you get paid and it's good enough to get paid and then send it. You've got a day, you've got six hours to do a piece, you've got six hours. So you've got to find a way of, of uh, shortcut, shortcutting things, you know. So I found that uh, doing a lot of abstract, uh, nonsensical uh, uh, parts of the images, like, i.e. for the back, like the background, was, uh, was it's a, a bull, I've just bullshit my way through through, the, through these years, you know what I mean? Like chucking colour at him, and, and almost like confusing people with colour and science, almost, you know. Oh, for example, you know, uh, the Doom Patrol work I did was my best years. Those were the years when I was allowed the most freedom, and um, I could really express myself there. Not with uh, the subject matter so much as the, the way I used the, the paint, the medium. I was, I was, I was given that room and that opportunity. That's wonderful to have that. To say, you know, you know, paint that, and I give you X amount of money, and just do it how you want to do it. There was a time when I was working with DC where people were really open, really open to to what are you going to do? You know, I think it was um, I think it was a time certainly when um, certain artists at that point were doing more abstract uh, kind of using color form, like Bill Sinkiewicz and Dave McKean, you know, that kind of period. And it was it Ken Williams as well, like chucking a paint on a star, you know, scratchy and kind of whatnot going on. Yeah, I mean, it's a different style for different different. It really depends. I mean, you know, some it might suggest it has to be more cartoony, more simplistic. Sometimes, uh, you know, more gritty, more 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 surreal. Um, I think you got to keep yourself yourself interested. How do you think your style's developed since you first started? How's it painting? developed? Well, I think I've become more, much much more refined. I could do what I used to do before, but but much quicker. And then I found myself. But what I was finding was um, that I generally speak too fast and should slow down a little bit. But the thing is, uh, there was a different energy going on when I was younger, because uh, once I got more confident with colour, which was pretty quick, quite quickly, is I wasn't interested particularly in uh, in uh, in form. Well, your in, painting style developed pretty much it, it in a year. I learned to paint literally with. Uh, I mean, I dabbled with paint, but I, I mean, to, I learned to paint really literally in a month. I mean, throughout the first book of Slain, that's that's you like can see it changing. Yeah, that's the first, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's interesting, yeah, you see how it changes, obviously, you uh, see the progression, but uh, what's interesting is I've learnt now not to have to th throw thick pa paint on everything. I've learned to appreciate the quality of the material I'm painting on. For example, like, uh, if we do do certain parts, it's all about, it's all about contrasts. Contrast of, of colour, uh, or subtle contrast of the same colour and texture. Textures against each other. Skin is different to material and materials have different textures. And I think it's a matter of, uh, of achieving that look. Like a leather jacket's got to look like leather. A shirt's going to be different to the leather and different to the face. 
I mean, even skin has and different it, textures. I mean, the lips are shiny, the nose can be shinier right, yeah, than I the think forehead. It's a of, 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 of doing that and uh, applying that and uh, making that come across. I mean, I mean, the biggest mistake, no, it's not a mistake because it's their people's business. They paint how they paint. Is that, I mean, you generally, a lot of, a lot of artists paint everything in the same, the same, same texture, the same tonal value. For example, I mean, typical things like when people were using airbrushes, everything, like, everything was airbrushed. The skin was airbrushed, looked like plastic, the jacket looked like plastic, the sh everything looked like plastic. Think about, think, think about how things fold, the clothes fold, how think about the, the, the kind of materials can be made from. And make it contrast against, the, juxtapose against the, the, what it's against. Makes something really work, I think. Makes it more kind of realistic in a way. Even if, even if it's heavily st stylized. You know, um, I mean, like you said, though, yeah, the lips, absolutely, the lips are different to the texture of the nose and the eyes. You know, you get different different colours, and, and uh, uh, it's not just flesh, it's, you get this, it's hints of green and blues and things, you know, and it's all about dynamics, how things cross each other, you know? I mean, it's like how you have another line and a line against that with an arc. But that can be, you know, that kind of thing, you juxtapose things, go, juxtapose the powers are all about the line and juxtapose lines that jostle against each other. But there's a certain amount of harmony in, it, in, it, in this whole aspect, I suppose. But nothing in life is a perfect composition. I mean, uh, I mean, like Frank Frazetta. I mean, he everything was a perfect composition. But for me, I would never, never was happy with that. I tried it, but it seems seemed seemed a bit. Uh, I didn't, didn't work for me because things aren't like that. Things are off key. They're off. You know, you don't see perfect compositions, do you? Things are, that way. things are off kilter slightly. Things are off kilter, yeah. There's not a criticism of Frazetta because he's my, my, one of my heroes. Uh, but um, you know, I just tend to do things. Uh, I think more about dyna or dynamics, dynamism, and power. I mean, that's what I'm good at doing. I think, and with with, with, in with interesting colours and textures. And, uh, I mean, a lot of people talk about Frank using a triangular format, and he well, did in a lot of cases, but. If you look at a lot of his paintings, he could be asymmetrical as well, mm. and he could really balance mm. it. Mm. Well, I mean, he was, he was a, a one-off man. He was like incredible what he did. You know, it was like. I mean, he, he could do a lot of work with the backgrounds where it was deceptively simple. It was just yeah. a few squiggles of paint, but perfectly balanced. Mm. Well, I find interesting about Fr Frazetta's work is that um, I've got some of his images in my uh, my room. Some of his uh, pieces framed. And some not, just just you know, loose pieces, print, re, prints, reprints, obviously. And um, the thing is, that I I often find myself looking at studying them and thinking, you know what? I've been looking at these bloody pictures for like I don't know, thirty years, and they still fascinate me and always seem interesting, always still interesting, and was quite un, 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 uncanny about his work as you continue to discover stuff about that image. There's always something about the piece I've never realised or looked at or noticed before. Now, it's true what, what about but for Zeta's work, it had an overall impact, but there's there's every little millimetre of it is interesting. There's always something interesting going on with his work, you know. Uh, yeah, incredible. I mean I think I think he really is one of the greatest artists ever lived. And I think he's really put down because of his uh, kind of chocolate chocolate boxy kind of fantasy kind of uh, stamp he has. Because no, no one who's a comic book artist or fantasy artist ever gets uh, taken seriously. But uh, I mean, Jesus, I mean, come on, I mean, look at what Frazette can do compared to a lot of other artists who do physicality, uh, physical pa paintings of, of physicality uh, of, uh, of the human form. I mean, who, who, who can do it as well as Frank? I mean, it's quite remarkable how he gets that across, you know, how he brings that across. And how he brings across that kind of a primal energy and power. Quite remarkable, and all it is is fucking paint in a tube, like anyone could buy down a shop tomorrow. I think and Michael, he just needs a bit to put it down better than most. I think Michelangelo's the only guy that springs to mind. Hey, well, Michelangelo, he kicks some butt. He was one of the first uh, comic book illustrators, wasn't he? I mean, what he did was a big collage of illustration. I mean, it's a remarkable work, isn't it? I mean, it's very few and far between. I mean, you just don't get many. You just you don't, don't come across. You don't get that kind of that kind of um, energy, that kind of uh, rawness, that kind of uh, honesty, pure, honest. I don't know. Magnificence, you know. Glory, magnificent gloriness of it. You know, it's all about the power of the line. I think, yeah, Michelangelo had it. Frank definitely had it, but hey, you don't get many have that. Picasso. Picasso. Well, I don't know about his stuff, man.
he he uh, changed his, he changed his style every day. Yeah. But he now, you talk about movement. you talk about Picasso. You didn't even mention that. But um, these fucking little flies you flap about. They get out of my nose. They're tiny. Hey, they got families to feed. I was looking for someone to fucking find a few crumbs somewhere. But um, well, uh, Picasso, yeah, well, I'm not sure, man. I think he's knocking stuff out for the sake. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I respect all artists. I never criticise them. But you know, if I like it, I like it. I don't, I don't. But uh, do you ever see his minotaurs? The series uh, yeah, of minotaurs. Yeah, there's some things he did. I mean, I really powerful. Oh no, uh, oh, I don't know. Oh no, no, what, no. What, what I'm talking about? I'm asking you a question about style changes. But I, I'm, I'm saying is, I'm not knowledgeable enough. I've not looked at, at enough of his work to uh, to know whether you know. I just see him do kind of pretty much a kind of African abstract style work. I mean. The primitivism phase. The primitivism phase. No, that's the only phase I've seen. So I don't know about the rest. So to me, he was always doing doing that style. The thing with Picasso is that 13, 14, 15, he was doing academic standard oil paintings. I'm sure he was. He was a child prodigy, and then he thought, where can well, I go with it? Well, well yeah, I, yeah, yeah, but well, you know, well, well, I don't know, you ask your own question then. So, you, you know, let's go back to Damon Hurst again. You talked about that, Damon Hurst, we're discussing it. People criticise his work, well, not everybody does, but there's, there's some people, a faction of people don't like it. Because it's not real art. It's not painting. It's not like real art. But how do you know he can't actually? I bet he can paint a fucking racehorse, or he can paint probably something just as good as the next man. How do you know he can't paint? Uh, he, he probably can. But why? Why? You know, still, why would he bother? Well, he pays his assistants to do the paintings for him. No, 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 no. I'm talking about how do you know? I'm saying if, if there are people who say they don't like his work, only a hand, short, small hand, ignorant few. <laughs> Hey Damon, give us a few bucks, will you, man? I'm well, working really hard. Up. I'd say good ninety-nine percent. You don't, you don't know how we can actually paint. No, you ask your question because, like I said, the cows are very abstract. Da da and people say this is not real art. Da da da. But you really don't know how that kind. Of, David Hurst might really draw really well. I mean, you know, do you know what I mean? I don't care if he does or not. But I'm saying, well, if he paint more normally or, and, and, and draw paint normally, that was satisfied the people who say he can't paint or draw. But you don't know if he can or not. But at the end of the day, what he was doing, he was doing something, was, he was making a movement, making, doing something that was progressing. He was waking people up. And guess what else? He made a shitload of money. Fucking good luck to him. Good luck to you, fella. Do you know what I mean? He's done well. And I think he's sincere in what he does. He's not bullshit. He, he enjoys it. He likes it. He, good luck to him. But well, Freud, Freud, well Freud, he, was, he was doing well until he sunk 45 million into a piece he intended to sell for 50 million and couldn't sell it. <sighs> what do you mean? Well, so he, what? He, got what? A, he got a skull. Well, he's got enough money to take the risk. I like the skull. Actually, the skull was one of the pieces I really did enjoy. It was pretty awesome. It really re re reminded me of those Mayan skulls, those glass skulls. It was fucking fantastic, eh? Hey, yes, I, I liked it. Didn't you? It's kind of cool, man. What the world of Arthur C. Clarke. It's called for the love of God. I like God. the piece. I like the piece actually he did uh, on Thursday, baby. Fucking little flies. Is uh, is uh, that one he did? Uh, he made his own. I think it was him. I thought it was him. Uh, he mixed blood and ice. His own blood with water. I think. I think that was another guy. The whole thing was Hurst. I don't think it was Hurst. I think it was another guy. I think you're fucking wrong. I, th I think we'll go on the internet and find out later. And you would be fucking wrong, so why bother? I'm sure it was Damon. I'm pretty certain it was. Well, actually, it doesn't matter whether it was or not. Who gives a shit? Because this video's all about me. It's nothing yeah. to boast about, is it? We'll edit that bit out. What do you think? It was another guy. Did. You, you don't edit that bit out. It was another you guy. Edit did. that bit out. It was well, another guy. Did the, blood somebody else. the bloodhead was another guy. Why do you have to edit that bit out? Keep all that bit in. Yeah. Whatever. Keep no, but no, I never did bother until and uh, no, uh, no. Actually, as it goes, it could be wrong. On the, on the head bit, I, but I thought it was one of uh, Hurst's earlier pieces. I thought I saw a program on it. I'm sure it's him. I'm pretty certain it's some other guy. Either way, it's kind of kind of interesting, though. Yeah, I think his best piece was a um, hundred years. It was a glass case divided into two sections. Yeah. In one section, there was an insect killer, an insectocutor. Yeah. You know, you know the the blue light with the electrical zapper. Underneath it was a skinned cow's head. <laughs> the skull with the muscle on it and the eyes still in. Oh, the split cow? Yeah, now, it, through the other side of this, it was two squares yeah. joined together, all encased in glass. Yeah. It was a big white box, like a sugar cube. 
right. with the fly larva in it and the flies would come out lay their eggs in the in the cow's head yeah. and as they were born um, so many of them would kill themselves on the insecticutor so it was the entire life cycle of flies encased in this piece yeah. almost like a not not so much a metaphor for life and death but genuinely life and death contained within the sculpture mm, interesting yeah and uh, actually, I actually read that Hearst said he, he did his best piece first mm. and everything since then has, has fallen pretty short of that but that is an interesting piece that actually contains life and death well a lot of this stuff is pretty pretty to do with death or or, or looking at death, isn't it? With a shark and a fucking coward and whatnot. And it's not so much death. What's it about fucking decay. Damon Hirst for, man? It's all about me. Oh, right. I'm trying to make myself. I'm trying to be, become a great artist, and I don't know. No, no. Uh, don't know. You see, you seem to be interested in Hirst for some reason. You, you, you seem to be more about you oh, than Hirst and Picasso. I think are quite interesting. Really? So, when you go and fucking visit Damon instead of fucking talking to me, then? The, the, so I talk to Hirst about about you know. Uh, on his fucking farm. We go visit him, don't talk to me. Oh, he's fucking blown it as Hurst. He hasn't blown it. He doesn't want you blo Hey, you just like anything, you know. Well, he, uh, whose opinion has he blown it? Well, he's wasted a lot of his own money on some projects. Well, that's his privilege to do so, time. isn't it? But he, um... That's his privilege to do so. This is money. I'm sure he, t he took enough risks in the early days by doing work that was controversial. Well, he could have failed, but he, he was succeeded. Well, he, he put all his eggs in one so basket because he wanted to. He wanted to have the most expensive piece by a living artist, and he ended up having to buy it back himself because he couldn't sell it. So his his ego got a little bit ahead of him. He wanted to go from selling a piece for a million to selling a piece for fifty million within within the space of five years, and it was a very Maybe, 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 yeah, but maybe just toying with the, the whole idea then of, of, uh, of art and its value and just see see how far I could go with it. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't, I don't think it was so much about maybe him taking a piss. I mean, or... Well, not taking I think a piss. Purely, no, no, I, no, I think, no, I think it was probably, no, I, the first I've heard about it, but to me it's like really seeing how far things would go, or could go, and how far he could take this whole money thing. And, um, and maybe he just sees uh, the buyers being idiots. And to see if you can make the more idiotic by seeing how, how far would they, how much more money would be prepared to spend on something, you know. So you don't know what, you don't know what he's thinking, because you don't know, you're not him. Uh, because uh, you're just probably reiterating what a critic would sort of said. So I don't know, I mean, the whole, whole, the whole, everything is, a, is an art form in itself. The whole process of trying to create some artwork for X amount of money, but having to buy it yourself is, is, is all like performance art then, isn't it? It's not so much like... A sculpture or a painting, a static piece, but it's all about emotional drama and drama, and, a, and uh, it's become like a whole whole thing, you know. I mean, since the nineties, the art I mean, I'm not saying the whole the whole the whole event of that 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 piece, whatever, and, and the failure of it, and him buying it back was all the whole the whole kind of scenario, you know, like someone playing out and reenacting, uh, like uh, like reenacting something, you know. Um, to, to seal the you know the end to make the performance to, to satisfy a craving or a need, you know maybe so few of money that you want to. I think it's more of a, a joke on, uh, on on the on the uh, on the buyers, if anything, you know. He's a, he must be pretty savvy by that by now. He's stupid, you know. He said, well, I guess he wanted to see how far it would take, and um, you know how how how, how much money people would be prepared to, to pay, you know. I mean, but if someone pays paid X amount of money for a piece, I'm sure. You know, in, in 20 years' time or 100 years' time, you know, someone could buy something for, for a bigger price. But, uh, you know, it's interesting. I don't really know, man. Carry on.